So this is Roebling's Delaware Aqueduct, which used to carry the Delaware and Hudson Canal across the Delaware River. So this here is the Delaware River. This is upstream and we're facing downstream, so we're facing south. The Delaware and Hudson Canal used to connect the coal fields of northern Pennsylvania, located near the Susquehanna River, to the Hudson River, where it could be transported downstream to New York. And the original canal was designed in, or was built in 1828, and they originally used a system of rope pulleys to get the boats across the river, but they found that it was a bottleneck in river traffic and there were some collisions between boats. So they decided in 1848 to build this aqueduct over the river. And it was designed by John M. Roebling, who was actually the same guy who designed the Brooklyn Bridge. One of the interesting features is these piers here, which are jutted out to to prevent ice from blocking up or, or from colliding with the bridge supports and as well as wood and other debris. But more interestingly, this is actually a suspension bridge. So if you can see, there's these cables that are how that are hung from the top of these stone supports and they and they flag down between these between the supports support so it's pretty much an ancestor of all modern cable suspension bridges it's actually the oldest existing wire suspension bridge in the United States And the bridge itself was something along the lines of 175 meters long and the cables are actually anchored at each end under the ground ground something like 20 feet under the ground using a system of stones to, to anchor them and to hold the bridge up and they needed a really strong suspension bridge because the weight of the water flowing over the canal was something on the order of 2,000 tons worth of weight, which is amazing if you think that the, this bridge was able to hold that and do so only using 1848 technology. The bridge was very successful. It actually reduced the travel time over the Delaware and Hudson Canal by something on the order of one day. And the canal itself was a huge success. It carried something on the order of 3,000 tons of, at some of its peak years, 3,000 tons of coal from Pennsylvania. And the canal and the coal mines cooperated quite a bit. They, the coal mines actually built a gravity, gravity railroad which transported their coal from their mines over a series of hills to a port along the canal for transport. The canal began to decline in the 1850s and 60s with the introduction of railroads such as the Erie Railroad, which was able to transport coal directly from Pennsylvania to the Hudson River Valley and bypass the canal. And it eventually went out of use in the 1898 when the canal was drained and this land was transformed to the state. They originally had planned to use this as a water aqueduct to transport water for drinking water, but that fell through and they decided to firstly transform this aqueduct into a road bridge and they filled in the canal and actually the road behind me route 95 i'm going to get a good shot of that later but it runs it runs along the path of the canal which was filled in to make the bed for the road this shot is taken from below the bridge and this gives you a good view of the cables that supported the bridge so the bottom part, the base of the bridge, would have originally held the 
base of the canal and these walls would have formed walls on the side would have formed a trough which the water would have gone through now this base actually holds up the road bed for the road going over the bridge and you can see the cables basically uh, hung from each of these stone towers and this here is the eastern tower of the bridge so the cables would be dug into the ground behind this tower to form the support and there's uh, another tower on the other other side over there where the other end of the bridge would have been supported and this here shows one of the frames with which the bridge is constructed from so these are the ribs which form the bridge one other interesting thing is this path here and this path is actually labeled mule track which i'm not sure why they would have a mule track that goes back around under the bridge but my guess would be that this was actually the original mule track from before when from before the bridge was constructed so when they were using tow ropes to cross the river instead of the bridge and see this we're going to pass under the bridge And if you see this stagnant pool of water here, my guess would be that this bridge or this stagnant pool of water used to be the original path of the canal before the aqueduct was constructed. So this would be where they'd connect, where they transfer the boats from the river to the canal. This is an interesting find. I'm just upriver the bridge, so the bridge is right over there, and I'm standing on the mule track. And I saw this framework of wood in the water. And I wonder if this was somehow associated with the original canal before the bridge was built. Maybe it was where they got the boats out of the river and transported them up to the canal, which would have been the other side of the mule track. I mean, it's definitely not natural. There wouldn't be a natural wood frame in the river like that. So I can only assume that it was somehow associated with the canal. So this looks like it's the remains of one of the locks. So you can see the wooden framework which used to form one of the lock doors. This is, the top of this is adjacent to the road, which is at the same level as the outlet of the aqueduct. And we're, be we're between the road and where the canal bed used to be. So if you see behind me, there's the river and at the same level of the shore, that would have been the bed of the original canal. So the canal level. So what they would have done is they would have taken the boats that were at the same level as the aqueduct and then they would have used locks like this. I believe there was a series of them to bring the boats down from the level of the bridge to the level of the canal. Or if they're going, if they're going westward, they'd bring them from the level of the canal up to the level of the bridge. So that, that there at the other end is the... I believe that's the outlet of this canal or of this lock. So there, there's the wooden, there's the wooden gates from the other end. And it would have been the same type of gates that we showed, I showed you during that video of the Raritan and Delaware canal gates. And this would have all been filled with water. And then from this lock, the canal would have traveled around 
down here and would have merged with the original path of the canal, which is that gully right there. So now I'm at the outlet of the lock. So the road is up there where that guardrail is located. And right now I'm in the base level, so I'm at the level where the bed of the canal would have been. And, and the boats would have exited the canal there through that gate and then traveled through this little section of the canal here. And then that rock formation there is actually the, the level of the original canal. So this here is the bed of the original canal and that there's an outlet is the river and the mule path would actually be located on that rise on the other side of the river or of the canal. I am now on top of the bridge and this is the view from the bridge looking north upstream and you can see here this is one of the tops of one of the pillars and this is the cables coming out of it and you can see down here the roadbed is actually that level down there so it's a good 10 feet below where i am on the top of the bridge and that would have been the bottom of the of the canal and this would have been the trough where the canal was located so it would have flowed down this trough here where the car is going and that's the view looking south over the other pillar and up the bridge to the Pennsylvania side and you can see down there that overgrown with vines is the Oh, the pillar that's jutting out to prevent debris from accumulating. And some nice whitewater rapids there. Now I am driving through the bridge. Notice the walls on both sides, which would have formed the sides of the trough that held the water. This was a new format for me, so I would be interested in hearing what you guys think. If you like the video, then go ahead and hit the like button. And if you have any feedback, please leave a comment below.